So many people are frustrated with their kicking techniques and they'll complain that they feel sluggish, unnatural and difficult to perform in comparison with their hand techniques. So in this video I'm going to be addressing the most common reasons this happens and I'm also going to provide solutions if you find yourself struggling with this. And this video is going to be focused through the lens of kicking but you know the same applies to actually all of your techniques and movement patterns to varying degrees so I'll definitely build on this topic in future videos. Now from what I've observed in training different people in this stuff is overwhelmingly they always think the answer lies in flexibility and that's because it's the most obvious factor on the surface when they're watching a decent kicker. But it's actually not as important as you might think, especially beyond a certain level. And while there are some people that are genetically very inflexible, it's actually a lot less people than you probably think. There only actually has been, say, a handful of those people in all of the years of training that I've actually met. And what I've observed instead is that the majority of people who think they're not flexible enough actually do have sufficient flexibility to kick well. However, their technique is poor or they lack strength in the associated muscles required to perform that kick well. But if they they don't know that then that's why they're sort of looking for the answers in the wrong place if you will it's kind of like trying to use a screwdriver to hammer in a nail say if that person wishes to execute a roundhouse kick but they aren't aware of how much they have to pivot on the standing foot because this is the starting point of that kick and if that's not done right then it has a knock-on effect to all of the other elements of that technique like not being able to get the hips into the correct position and so the way that feels to the person practicing it is like their leg then simply will not go into the desired position like it's getting stuck at a certain level and that's why it feels to them like it's being caused by a lack of flexibility when in reality they weren't aware it's actually an issue of misalignment of the hips. So obviously flexibility is a very important factor in dynamic activities like martial arts training and you should certainly work to develop it continuously but we need to derive a balanced approach to developing this without going too heavily into one of the following areas at the detriment of others and to do this requires a three-pronged approach to training that focuses in all different areas that are necessary to kick in well and in order of importance those are as follows. Number one is a thorough understanding of the biomechanics of that particular technique. Number two is exercises that develop the associated muscles and number three is having sufficient flexibility in order to perform it unhindered with fluidity and finesse. Many martial artists and instructors actually focus too heavily on one of those areas and also neglect others in the process. When that happens it results in one of the following archetypes that I'm going to be discussing in a minute. Now these are extremes for the sake of the example and it's very rare that you do get somebody so skewed on one side but they do exist and I have come across these people. Number one is being too focused on only flexibility so this martial artist is able to kind of place their leg anywhere in space but they have underdeveloped muscles so regardless of that their kicks lack any you know aggression and force behind them and instead their movements can end up kind of looking more like a form of dance. What also tends to happen with people at this level of sort of hyper flexibility we'll call it is they almost develop what I think is too much control which sounds like an oxymoron for this topic but what that results in is any unique and individual style becoming stripped away from the techniques and they end up kind of moving like a gymnast which I personally don't think looks very cool. Gymnasts have this measure of perfect form that's universally recognised which is why all competitive gymnasts aim to adhere to that and move in a really similar way. Whereas I think martial arts is more like a personal freedom of expression and should you know contain your own unique style and flair. On top of that having a relatively extreme range of motion through their joints combined with a lack of strength in the associated muscles means that often at the extension point of their kicks their body will kind of fall out of alignment and their kicking lines will go off and lines are basically the trajectory at which a kick travels which should be really sharp and clearly defined and that's because they're so flexible that there's almost no resistance offered in the form of their joints kind of keeping their leg in that alignment so their kicks lack that sort of snappy and explosive look. The second category is people that have become too focused upon strength and conditioning and I would say this is the most common archetype seen in modern martial arts. When I've been to the odd class when I've been traveling or something there's usually only a tiny bit of stretching at the beginning of class and even then it's just the sort of basic stuff that somebody like a football player would do not someone that's going to be performing high level dynamic movements and then it's just straight into drills and when the class you know is coming to a close there's no warm down static stretching or anything like that either and this is something I believe even the majority of professional combat athletes suffer from and I know some of them personally who actually don't do any form of stretching despite it being their profession or at least something they're taking very seriously and what happens in this case is that person has neglected pairing sufficient flexibility work with that strength and conditioning which is a huge mistake because focusing too much on this especially if you're lifting heavy weights can actually work to reduce your flexibility in some cases as well well. And so then it becomes the double whammy of not only not stretching but then actually making yourself less mobile due to your muscles becoming too tight and so you can see how it becomes this vicious cycle. And some telltale signs of this can be seen even in the person's stance when they're not actually performing any techniques in which they appear hunched and stiff. When they perform techniques the execution appears laboured and effortful. When really well executed techniques no matter how high level should look like they simply happen as if it was as easy as walking. A lot of these individuals have also become too unnecessarily muscle bound due to that type of 
of training and have kind of exceeded too far outside of their natural weight, which further adds to the sluggishness and has a knock-on effect of things like everything using more energy, which causes premature fatigue and yet further laboured movement. And the last of those archetypes, which is also the most favourable one you could find yourself in, is the person that has amazing technique, but for whatever reason lacks flexibility and strength in the associated muscles. And this is incredibly rare because learning the techniques to a high enough level means your body will be naturally developing incidentally, helping flexibility and strength through adaptation. And the reason I said that this is the most favourable to be in of those three archetypes is because getting your techniques to a really high level like this is the one that takes the most work and time to really get it up to that standard. And this is why in all of my videos I'm always placing such heavy emphasis upon technical work because when you have a technique down pat and understand it really well it's easy to build strength and flexibility on top of that but it doesn't work the other way around. So the way this would look might be that that person has very sound techniques, you know, good pivot on the standing foot, nice extension of the leg and so on, but the kicks will likely be low and lacking power, which may resemble something more like Tai Chi or yoga. So that's an explanation of the three broad archetypes that can occur that I've been able to identify, you know, but there can also be different blends of these and combinations. With those out of the way, you should be able to kind of identify yourself and where you're at with one of those more closely than others. And there's obviously a vast array of different things you can do in order to bring those weaker areas up. But in the next section, I'm gonna give what I think are the best return on investment things that you can do in order to improve all of those areas. But before we do that, let me just reiterate the importance of continually working upon all of these areas in tandem, despite, you know, maybe placing heavier focus upon bringing one of those weaker areas up. And that's so that we avoid any future imbalances as well. So in the first case, the person who has that huge range of motion and hyperflexibility but lacks strength needs to work on some strength and conditioning. And for this, I recommend a couple of different approaches. The first is one of my go-to exercises, which are slow kicking drills in which you perform static holds followed by the technique executed very slowly and then building in speed and intensity. And you can do this with almost all of your kicking techniques. These are performed by holding onto something for balance to allow you to focus entirely upon having good form. You have to make sure when you're doing these that you are covering all of the right technical nuances like pivoting on the standing foot, chambering, extending, rechambering and so on. And if you want more info on this I'll link a video below which I cover this in much greater detail. These slow kicking drills really work well upon our technical proficiency because we're essentially teaching our body how the technique should feel by repeating it over and over again. But they also have the added benefit of developing the appropriate muscles incidentally simply because you're performing the kick so many times and so your body will adapt really well to that. And if you're doing these right you should certainly feel it in areas like the glutes, quads and obliques. The second are some exercises for the legs and core and for these I would recommend some plyometric drills. These by no means have to be complicated and you can develop the leg muscles very well using exercises like explosive squat jumps in which you squat to 90 degrees then spring up as high as you can extending the legs and pointing the toes and then keep repeating these for three to five sets of 10 repetitions. Some other things that would also help would be exercises like squat thrusts and burpees because of their explosive nature. In particular the middle part in which we bring the hands and legs closer together which will target the core in a way that's similar to how we engage it in our kicking techniques. So performing these type of exercises consistently will strengthen the muscles and serve to balance out that person's technique bringing a greater level of strength control and explosiveness to them. The next category is the person that has skewed too far up onto the strength and conditioning side and lacks flexibility technique or both and these people really need to work upon their flexibility and mobility so they can bring a greater level of grace and fluidity into their movements and this can be achieved using just a basic static stretching routine four to five times per week consisting of the following exercises in which you hold for 20 to 30 seconds for three to four sets and that's all that's actually necessary to achieve elite level kicking technique provided it's you know coupled with all of these other elements the first is a low squat in which you push your legs outwards using your forearms and hold the next is the butterfly stretch pushing the legs lower to the ground using the arms next is going as low as you possibly can into box split to where it's uncomfortable but not painful after that perform a straddle with the legs straight and the toes pulled back attempting to lay your chest flat onto the floor. And lastly, place the leg out stretched with the toes pulled back on an object high enough to cause the hamstrings and calves to become elongated. And then pull your body down, attempting to lay your chest onto the quads and shin. And if that person also has poor technique, then they'd definitely benefit from doing the slow kicking drills as well that I illustrated in the previous section. And they could also do something like line kicks, in which you repeat a single technique walking forward in midair as perfectly as you can. You can also do this against a bag or a kick shield or something, but just be aware that when you're kicking something with 
resistance you know because of that feedback that you get from the target it can actually allow you to be getting away with things that you wouldn't get away with if you were just performing a raw technique in midair and so that's why I always suggest some practice of the technique without any resistance or target just so that you're able to identify your own flaws much more easily and the last category is the person who has solid technique but lacks flexibility and strength for whatever reason and they should obviously employ one or both of the methods listed in the previous sections and so this is really about having a balanced approach to your training and techniques and I hope this video served to illustrate some of the common pitfalls and what I think are sort of hidden areas that are holding people back from being able to perform high level kicking techniques as mentioned the most common place people look to is flexibility which may well play a factor but I wanted to highlight how only looking at flexibility doesn't provide a complete picture and you have to work holistically at all the elements of kicking in order to get to a really high level thank you very much and I'll see you soon